Hello everyone, welcome back to our Bible lessons. Today we're going to be in the 16th book of the Bible. It's the book of Nehemiah. And we're going to find out about Nehemiah and who he is and what he did. It's one of the books of the histories of the Jews. Nehemiah grew up in Jerusalem. And that's where he lived. And in Jerusalem, the city had a big wall all around it to protect it. But one day, God had allowed an army to come. And they broke down the walls of the city. It was awful. And they burnt the gates of the city. The gates were wooden. They burnt them with fire. And they hauled a lot of the people away to their land far away. And Nehemiah was one of those people who were taken captive and hauled away. Wow. Why do you think God allowed this to happen to his people, the people of Israel? Well, they were carried away because of their sin. Yes, they had turned against God. They did not obey his rules anymore. <clears throat> God was very sad. They had not loved him the way that they should. It is sad, isn't it? No wonder God was sad and allowed them to be taken captive. <clears throat> Do you love Jesus? Does he know? I love Jesus. Does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus likes to hear me say that I love him every day. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. In prayer, I'll tell him so. I hope we don't forget to do that, to tell the Lord how much we love him. Well, back to Nehemiah now. Nehemiah, when he got in the new country, was given a real important job. His job was to be the cup bearer for the king, King Artaxerxes. Now, what is a cup bearer? A cupbearer would bring the wine to the king, but the cupbearer had to taste it first and make sure no enemy had poisoned it. Wow, the cupbearer was a very trusted man, and that's who Nehemiah was to the king. Whew, what if they were poisoned that, then Nehemiah would be poisoned, wouldn't he? Well, one day, Nehemiah saw one of his brethren that had come back from his home city of Jerusalem. The brethren's name was Haniah. And he asked him, how are things back at Jerusalem? What's it like there now? Are they rebuilding it? And Haniah said, the people who were left there are in big trouble. The wall is still broken down and the gates are in ashes, still ashes from being burned. Oh, the Bible says that Nehemiah was so sad that he sat down and he wept and he mourned certain days and he prayed before God. He prayed and he asked God to listen and hear his prayer. And he confessed the sins of himself and his people while he prayed. That's so good. That's part of that one song we sing, to keep our heart in tune. That means confessing our sins. And Nehemiah prayed because he wanted God to help him be able to go back to Jerusalem and build the walls. But he's afraid. He's afraid to ask the king to let him go. Well, the next time he went before the king to serve him his wine, 
Nehemiah looked sad. Now you weren't supposed to look sad when you went before the king. That, you could be killed if you did. But the king liked Nehemiah and he said, Nehemiah, why are you so sad? You're not sick. This must be that your heart is sad. And Nehemiah became afraid because like I said, he could be in trouble looking sad before the king. So Nehemiah prayed silently to the God of heaven and he asked God to help him say the right things. And he told the king, the place where my parents are buried lies in ruins and it makes me very sad. He's talking about Jerusalem, his home city. And the king said, well, what do you want me to do about it? If it please the king, send me to Jerusalem to rebuild the city of my fathers, Nehemiah said. And God began to answer Nehemiah's prayer. See, he had done things right. He had turned to God when he was in trouble. Psalm 50, 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. So God is beginning to answer his prayer. And it also talks about keeping our heart from sin, doesn't it? God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. Well, his prayer was going to be answered because the king decided to let him go. He gets to go back to Jerusalem. And the king did more than just let him go. He sent some soldiers along with him. And he sent some letters to for all the kings in the area and the rulers to let them pass, that the king had said it was okay. And one letter was to the man who was in charge of the king's forest. And Nehemiah could have all the wood he needed to rebuild the gates of Jerusalem. That's what that letter said. Wow, how exciting that God would answer him this way, his prayer. Well, when Nehemiah got to Jerusalem, he didn't tell anybody why he was there. No, he went out in the dark and the moonlight. And he took some men with him that he had brought with him. And he took them along and they walked around the outside of the city walls just to see how bad it was. And there were some places there were so many rocks and rubble he couldn't even get through. Wow, it must have been an unusual trip in the moonlight looking at all that mess. And Nehemiah ended up He'd seen enough, and the very next day, he called together the rulers of the city. I've come from the king, he said, and I want to help you build the walls of the city. The rulers were glad that someone had come to help them. We're ready, they said. Let's start building. And before long, the people all over the city were excited about building up the walls. We'll help, they said. We'll help. Is that the way you are at home? Are you willing to be a helper and help when mom and dad need help? I will always be a helper. Give my best in everything I do. I will be more thoughtful too. Helping, helping everywhere. Make the bed today, make the bed today. Put the toys away, put the toys away. Take the garbage out, take the garbage out. Helping, helping everywhere. Helpers are what we need. Helpers in word and deed. 
Helpers, the rarest breed, helping, helping everywhere. I hope you're like that at home. But that's the way the people in Jerusalem were. They were excited. Nehemiah divided them up in groups, and each group was supposed to take care of a different section of the wall. He divided up the work, and that way it wouldn't be too much for anyone. And how those people worked. There were soldiers and merchants and priests and shepherds all working together to build the walls. There were uncles and fathers and cousins and grandfathers too. Everyone wanted to help, even the boys and the girls. But you know, just like every time we want to work for God, Satan tries to stop us. And there were some enemies who did not want the walls of the city of Jerusalem built. Sanballat and Tobiah, they're right up front here. They're not Jews, and they don't want the walls built, and they're making fun of the people and laughing. What's this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king, they said? And then they said, even if a fox would walk along the top of the wall, it would fall down, they said. And they laughed and they laughed. And when the, when the peop, when people try to keep us from doing right, we must decide like Nehemiah did, that we're going to do right no matter what happens. Well, Nehemiah was a wise man because he turned to God in prayer about those two men, Sanballat and Tobiah, he knew that God would fight for them. Well, as the wall grew taller and taller, Sanballat and Tobiah weren't laughing anymore. This could be serious, they said. We must attack them before the wall is finished. Well, so Nehemiah encouraged the people. And he said, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughter and your wives. And he told them to gather their families together and have their families on the wall by them. And then he told them to get swords and to put the swords on their side and he had a trumpeter. You can see him down here in the corner. And if Sambal and Tobiah came, he would blow the trumpet to warn them. And they kept building with their families beside him and their swords at their side. And they kept building, even though Sambal and Tobiah wanted to stop them. And they worked hard for the Lord. Our God will fight for us, Nehemiah encouraged the workers. Wow. Nehemiah really helped them out because pretty soon the wall was finished. Do you know what? It took them only 52 days to build that wall because everyone worked together and God was with them. 1 Corinthians 3, 9a says, for we are laborers together with God. And that's what they did, work together. We need to do that, don't we? And the people were filled with joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength, God's word tells us. There was singing and praising, and they thanked God and they turned back to him. They had a great revival. They read God's word together, and they prayed together, thanking God. They had decided to follow Jesus, hadn't they? They were going to follow the Lord again. How about you? Are you following him? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. That means no quitting. Have you, 
Have you believed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus loves you so much that he died for you. 1 Corinthians 15, 3b and 4 says how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what you need to believe, that Jesus died for your sin and he can save you. Won't you receive God's free gift today?